Kevin and Emily, you're really welcome here to Leinster House. Um, it's not very often that members of the public get in to this chamber. And the last time we had young people here, and we had them in numbers, was uh, to discuss the climate situation towards the end of uh, 2019. So it's great to see young people here again. And can I just take the opportunity to wish all those young people across the country that are doing Leave and Cert and Junior Cert um, the very best of good fortune because they've gone to gone through two years of hell, really. It's been schooling and education unlike anything we've seen in this country before. So we really, really do hope that it goes well for all of you. Thank you so much Thank for you. having us. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a challenging two years, but look, we're nearly at the end of it now. So mm. it's, it's fantastic. And I suppose I wanted to ask you that, especially over the last two years, I've particularly observed a lot of young people having a, an increase in interest in politics, especially around the Leaving Cert reform, I think. So can I ask how this interest can be encouraged uh, in young people to get involved in politics? Well, I think it's vitally important that it is encouraged, and you're absolutely right, because there is a heightened uh, awareness, and it's driven by a multiplicity of things. You mentioned the Leave and Cert and reform of Leave and Cert and issues around third level education. That's understandable. But I think there's a real passion among young people about issues around climate change and some of the social change that we've seen affected in, in Ireland in recent times. How can that be harnessed? I think by politicians making it very clear that we want to hear and we want to listen to what young people have, have got to say. And I think we have to go a step further. I think we have actually got, as politicians in the system, to work to get more young people actively involved in politics, but also in electoral politics, because we, the, the, we're, we're too old and too grey and too male in, in, in this place. And we need to see a lot more young people coming forward and offering themselves for election. And I think the place would only be the better for that. It's amazing that me and Kevin were given this opportunity to come here. I think that just shows as well that you are also interested and just willing to hear our, our questions and our voices, which is so empowering really as well as as we you know, yeah, well, I think, it, I think it's, it's, it's a situation in which we've got to work together. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's never dismiss older people and the knowledge and experience they've got, but let's never ever forget the importance of the vitality and the enthusiasm and the idealism of youth. Uh, and I tell you what, we need idealism uh, in abundance, uh, particularly in a place like Leinster House. Thank you so much. Uh, my first question is, uh, when and why did you become interested in politics? It's a big question. <laughs> uh, well, God, I, I became interested in politics in 1977 when there was a general election and there was, for the first time, a American razzmatazz. They, there were campaign buses, there were jingles on the TV, there was... Um, election songs be, being heard and, and that kind of caught my caught my attention and as a teenager I became um, passionately interested in the Irish language and um, as I looked at the political parties I came from a very mixed background my mother was uh, from a Labour Party supporting family my father um, came from a Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael family where his father was Fianna Fáil and his mother was Fine Gael so really I could have kind of gone in any, in, in any direction. But, but I was attracted to Fianna Fáil because of its stance on the national question, Irish unity, and because it appeared to be very strongly committed to the Irish language. Can I ask you, is there a certain amount of creativity in your job? And if so, what it is, or is it just very much by, by the book, if you will? <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose creativity can have very many meanings. I mean, uh, you have got to be creative sometimes in how you bring people with you, how you communicate uh, a message uh, to people. Uh, it, it, it can be kind of quite different how you communicate a message about, let's say, the environment to a farming and rural community as distinct with how you communicate it to a group of students in a third level uh, institution. Um, but you need to have creativity as well when it comes to uh, doing our fundamental job, which is about making legislation. So how do you create, how do you carve out the best possible legislation, legislation that will help move our country forward, improve the quality of lives uh, of our 
people and deal with the many, many problems uh, that exist out there. So I think, yes, on every front, uh, a politician, whether dealing with their constituents, uh, whether communicating a message, or whether devising and enacting and moulding legislation, they've got to be creative and they've got to be prepared to take risks as well because, you know, if you don't take risks, you'll very rarely achieve anything and good ideas sometimes need to be trialled before we can be certain whether they're good or not. What is your message to young people who want to be engaged in politics but they don't know where to start? Would you have any tips and advice? Oh, absolutely. I would, I would think that all politics originates in communities. Yeah. And your community at present might be your school or it might be your town or village. And I would say get involved in uh, your school community. I mean, be a member of the Students' Council, uh, join some voluntary effort, become involved in extracurricular activity. Um, that's where I came from. I found I wasn't much good at sport, but I was good at organising uh, things. And uh, I mean, go out there then into the community and see what can you do to make the place you live in a better place to live in, uh, to make it a better place for kind of young people of, of, your, of your own age. Um, if, there ain't, if there's not enough sporting activity, well, what can you do to augment that? If there's loads of sport, but not anything else for those who are not sporty, well, can we, f can we set up a youth club? Can we, can we reach out and get support to do that? And it's from that sort of involvement that you can kind of progress uh, into politics. And I, I, I think it's far better to be involved in politics than not. And I think it's a matter for the person and their own disposition and their own set of priorities, what political party, if any, they are attracted to or simply become involved as, as an independent. Yeah. Um, right across the country in councils and here in the Dáil and in the Shannad, we have outstanding people who are independents just as we have outstanding members of political parties. So don't sit on the ditch yeah. complaining about how bad everything is without having the guts, and it takes guts, to get involved yourself in trying to make things better. You visited the Ukrainian um, president just last week, I believe, um, and I can see they're wearing the Ukrainian flag as well on, on, your, on your suit there. But I wanted to ask, with so many Ukrainian refugees now taking refuge in Ireland there, we cannot forget the Ukrainian refugees who are, have, are now continuing their studies in Ireland. I read an article this week about uh, three particular students who are now taking up their studies in the Royal Academy of of music here in Dublin and are continuing their musical studies in violin and in piano and how do you think their creativity and their musical influence will have an impact on us, on Ireland, because I think what has happened is just, it cannot be forgotten that there's people coming here and continuing their studies. I think there's a couple of aspects to that. First and foremost, right throughout the country, uh, Ukrainian families are arriving and they're looking to gain access to primary schools, to secondary schools, to universities. Uh, I've, I've an involvement in education in my constituency and I have a simple message that I've communicated to the schools I'm involved in that we might be full, but no matter how many Ukrainians turn up, we've got to find space for them. We've got to in include them because uh, their circumstances is unlike anything. Um, any of our students have ever uh, experienced. In terms of their performance within the education system, whether it's in the world of music, and there are hugely talented Ukrainian uh, uh, musical artists, um, I think they're going to enrich the schools and the universities uh, and the arts colleges because their experience will inevitably temper the, their their attitudes, their imaginations, uh, their ambitions, uh, and the type of work that they will produce. You can't emerge from the middle of a war zone without seeing the world differently. And whether you express that vision in, in the form of paint, or sculpture, or music, or poetry, or writing, it's inevitably going to be impacted. What's your favourite part of your job, your fa favourite aspect of the job? Oh, 
I, I, this is my second term as Count Corley. In the first term, um, we had a minority government. We were in a situation where it was very important to bring people together from all sides because you could only get legislation through if both government and opposition worked together. So I really enjoyed that sort of trying to build collegiality and at the same time to re trying to reform how we uh, do our business here, trying to move the... The, the, the methodologies and the, the systems into the 21st uh, century, while at the same time retaining that which was good from, from, from the past. Uh, there's another aspect to this that, that is behind the scenes uh, and was absent during COVID, but it's what I call parliamentary diplomacy. It's where, as Count Corla and Cahirlik of the Shannad, you're constantly meeting incoming political and business and community delegations from all around the world who are coming to Ireland for whatever the purpose might be. And the tradition is when they come here to Leinster House, they're greeted and met and have discussions with either the Count Corla or the uh, Cahirlik of the, the Shannad. Uh, and that can also then give rise to reciprocal invitations um, so it was arising out of our invitation to President Zelensky uh, to talk to us here virtually that I got an invitation to go to to Kiev. Um, uh, so that that sort of interacting uh, with international delegations and other parliaments and politicians and finding areas of common interest where we can work together to make things happen. I have a podcast called Talk About It and I asked this question to everyone that I interview and I was very intrigued when I heard that I was going to be interviewing you to ask you this question and that is what is a quote that you live by or you particularly enjoy and why? Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Okay. Can I ask why that one? Why that in? Because it is fundamentally about respect and if you respect other people and show them respect, you'll get that back uh, in spades. And if we respected each other while we work together, we'd achieve far more than if we're simply trying to steal a march or get a step ahead uh, of, of, of the other person. There's phenomenal power in collective action. And you only get collective action when you have um, a willingness to cooperate and that comes from having a sense of mutual respect. What do you think are the main challenges for the youth in Ireland today? I think that you're going to emerge from your secondary school and from college or from apprenticeships uh, into a world, a land of opportunity. This country has shown amazing resilience. We've had some dreadfully deep recessions, but we've come out of them stronger and more determined. We've, who'd, who'd have thought, after two years of the plague of COVID, that we'd find ourselves here with full employment? We need 50,000 workers to come into this country to help us develop the construction industry. 50,000 workers. That's a huge number of people when you consider that our workforce is only 2.2, 2.3 million. Uh, and I think for young people um, emerging, there, there, there's been a, parents of my generation have wanted our kids to think only about university and academic pursuits. Uh, we need to cop ourselves on and realize uh, that not everybody needs to be uh, teachers or scientists or doctors or whatever that it is every bit as good, uh, will give us good an earning, good an income, good a, qual good a quality of life, to be a really good plumber or a really good electrician. Uh, and we need to encourage our young people to look to apprenticeships, um, uh, look to self-employment, look to becoming young entrepreneurs. Gosh, look, look at the number of young people, say, in the information technology area, who have become not just Irish leaders, but world leaders. Um, look at the Collisons. Look at, look at Paddy 
Cosgrave, for example. I mean, there are lots of people out there that have distinguished themselves uh, through developing their natural entrepreneurial skills. Are there any initiatives within your own constituency, South Kildare, to uh, encourage and support creativity for young people? Yeah, there, 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 we have a very good arts uh, programme running there. We have a good, very good uh, county ETB where Wicklow and Kildare are joined and um, there's a big focus on youth work and youth facilities. Uh, we have Kildare Youth Services working in many centres across uh, the, the county. Um, and I think schools themselves are now realising that it's not just enough uh, to teach a curriculum kind of nine to four, but that they need to, they need to give added value to their, their students. So that uh, in Kildare Town, for example, uh, where I live, uh, our school is now teaching Mandarin as, as an option. Yeah. Um, in a primary school I'm involved in, they've established a chess club. So people, younger kids, come in and learn chess, which is quite an, a, a skill to accomplish and it'll help them in later life. Uh, so yeah, I think there, 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 there's a realisation that sport is vitally important but that not everyone will be interested in sport and that they are every bit as entitled to be looked after and provided for as the sportsmen and women. There are so many films um, like Kevin Beale's short film this year called Sunday and as well a more popular uh, feature film is The Iron Lady and these films concentrate on like political stories. So do you think these political stories and films should be encouraged and do you think that um, you know, more people get interested in politics or the history even of, of politics through these films? Well, look, I've yet to see Kevin's uh, film, so I'll, I'll tell you whether that's helpful after I've, I've seen it or not. But I suppose drama, dramatisation of political events and all of that helps to tell the story of politicians and what they're setting out to achieve. I think the commonality um, of the appearance of uh, politicians in kind of series and dramas and what have you tend to focus on the roguishness and the duplicity that goes on in, in, in politics. And you very rarely get to see in uh, the world of cinema or TV uh, the sincere sort of politician, the person who is a conviction politician who who got involved in their parliament, whether it's Westminster or the Duma. Well, there might be too many idealistic ones in the Duma, but <laughs> <laughs> wherever, wherever it might be. Um, but they got involved to do good, to, to pursue some particular set of ob ob objectives. But that tends not to be the, the stereotypical portrayal of a politician uh, in, in movies uh, or on the stage. Uh, are uh, on TV and I think that's kind of regrettable and if the, that has an impact, uh, the impact is to dissuade people I think from becoming involved. Um, in, in, in the big, the big areas of the Iron Lady, um, I suppose it did serve to give a sense of the enormous influence that, that Ma Margaret Thatcher had. More recently you've had uh, the um, the Crown series, which focused heavily on, on Thatcher, the Thatcher years, and then the, the relationship between Queen Elizabeth and, and Margaret Thatcher. And I suppose you saw towards the end of that, uh, the humanity of the Iron Lady, who, who felt betrayed by, by her colleagues and felt kind of beaten down by them. Um, so there's no harm to have uh, that sort of humanity of the of, of a political people um, revealed. Yeah. Do you think there should be more of that humanity in, in films like that? Yeah, I think there should be more honest portrayal of, of, of people that, um, that the, the, the politician shouldn't be characteristically or typically the, the bad guy, the corrupt guy, the person who's, or the lady who's viable. Um, people with principle. Look at, look at Martin Luther King. 
Look at Nelson Mandela. Well, there are, there are people in every parliament in the world that are people of principle, and they deserve to have their stories told. As a bonus question, I love movies, so I was just wondering what's your favourite movie? I love movies as well. Yeah. I, do you know what? I'm, 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 I'm torn uh, on that because if I go back to the old classics, the old classic movies, I absolutely love Casablanca and I have seen it over and over and over again. Uh, but in, in more, more modern times, maybe you might call them modern, but um, I, I think Dances with Wolves with Kevin Costner was exceptionally good. Uh, and I think the last of the Mohicans with uh, Daniel Day-Lewis was, was really, really good. And uh, my wife dragged me off to see Little Women with Sir Sharonan <laughs> uh, <laughs> last year, and I absolutely enjoyed it. But then Sir Sharonan is exceptional. Yeah. She's, um, she, she, she just is so versatile. It's, it's impossible not to be impressed by her. Yeah, thank you very much. That's You're very welcome. Can I just say to you that I hope the next time you two guys return to this chamber, it'll be to take up official seats on either side uh, yeah. of the house because it's young people like you we need thank you very in numbers. Much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. You too. It's lovely. You too. Thank you so you too. much. Thank you.